So, today what we're going to be doing is a demonstration of how you can use thin layer chromatography to analyse a mixture. Um, so, thin layer chromatography can tell you how many different compounds you've got in your mixture and it can also show you uh, perhaps what those compounds are. So to demonstrate that, we're going to use some tablets. We've got three tablets with only one active compound in them. We've got caffeine, ibuprofen and paracetamol. Um, and then we've got this fourth tablet, which is a cold and flu remedy, which has got a mixture of components in it. Uh, and so hopefully we'll be able to use TLC to show us exactly what is in that, uh, what's in that cold and flu remedy. So the first thing we're going to need is solutions of the active components in each tablet. So to do that, I'm going to take a tablet and my pestle and mortar. grind up the tablet and transfer it into a labelled vial which I can then add some ethanol to to make up the solution. So, caffeine tablet in the labelled vial, add some ethanol, lid on, give it a shake, and that's my first sample. Uh, I'm going to wipe down my pestle and mortar and my spatula just with an acetone to get the remnants of the ta tablet off and then repeat the process for the paracetamol, the ibuprofen and for the cold and flu remedy. So, with our complete set of samples made up, the next thing we need is a TLC plate to run it on. So the TLC plate consists of a layer of silica, which is our stationary phase on a support of aluminium. The, alum the aluminium uh, could also be uh, glass or indeed plastic. And the first thing we're going to do is draw a line on our plate about a centimetre or so from the bottom, which will serve as the baseline. And then on that baseline, we're going to put four ticks, one for each sample. We're using pencil because it doesn't run up the plate with the solvent. And uh, being careful as we do it not to score the silica at all, just write on it. Label all the ticks for their sample, caffeine, ibuprofen, paracetamol and the unknown labelled X there. So the next thing to do is to apply the sample to the plate. So I'm going to take my TLC spotter, if I can get one out. Draw up a little bit of the first solution into it. and then gently touch it against the surface of the silica to deposit it. A couple of spots in the same site will ensure a nice concentrated spot which should be easy to visualise. I'll just empty out the remaining solution and give a rinse with some ethanol. I'm using a capillary tube as a spotter but you could just as well use 
a paintbrush, uh, the tip of a pipette, uh, a blunt hypodermic needle. So, now that we've prepared our plate, we need a tank to run it in. The tank needs to consist of a sealed vessel with the developing solvent in the bottom of it, uh, in this case ethyl acetate, um, and you want to make sure that the uh, atmosphere inside your TLC tank is saturated with the vapours of your developing solvent, because otherwise what's going to happen is as the solvent works its way up the TLC plate it will evaporate off the TLC plate and the solvent front will not rise as fast as it should. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line the inside of this tank with a filter paper, just like that. Uh, and what that will do is it will soak up the ethyl acetate and help the air inside stay saturated with vapours. So I'm going to add in enough ethyl acetate that there's about half a centimetre's depth so that there's enough for the plate to run but not so much that when I put the plate in the baseline is below the level of the solvent. Put the lid on and just give that a swirl to wet the filter paper so that the atmosphere is nice and saturated. So, now I'm going to run the TLC take my tweezers and with the plate I'm going to whip the lid off the tank and then as quickly as possible drop the plate in vertically replace the lid reasonably quickly and now I want to leave that undisturbed until the solvent front reaches within a centimetre of the top of the plate. So now that the solvent is nearly at the top of the plate, I'm going to very quickly grab the plate out and with my pencil mark the height that the solvent front has reached. Uh, now before we can visualise the TLC plate I need the solvent that's on it to evaporate um, so giving it a waft can just help with that. So now that that's dry we can use uh, short wave UV to visualise the plate. What we're looking for is dark patches where the UV light is absorbed um, and so the plate doesn't fluoresce as it normally does under UV light. So I'm just going to circle all the obvious spots in pencil, so that when I take it out from under the UV we can then analyse it fully. Five spots, nice. So, I'll just go over them, just make them a little bit darker and a little bit more visible. So, if we look in uh, the column for our unknown, what we can see is that it's got two spots showing us that there's two components in there. And if we compare the height that those spots are at to the height of the uh, spots from the other components, we can see that our cold and flu remedy contains caffeine, not ibuprofen, but it does contain paracetamol. Uh, and the last thing that we can do is just record some RF values for each of those components. So we'll need the height that each component ran at taken at halfway up the spot 
and also the height that the solvent front ran at. So, just measure those quickly. So the solvent is at 3.7 centimeters. So all of these sums are going to have 3.7 on the bottom. Then caffeine is at 0.4 Ibuprofen is at 2.3 and paracetamol is at 1.6 So I'll just pop those numbers into my calculator. 0.4 over 3.7 is 0.11 to two decimal places. 2.3 over 3.7 is 0.62 to two decimal places. And 1.6 over 3.7 is 0.43 to two decimal places. The last thing to do is record the solvent because all the RF values are solvent dependent, so we used ethyl acetate. And there you go. Quick TLC demo.